Hello everybody and welcome back for another live action 1v1. Uh, this time I'm playing Mordor. I did go random. Um, and I'm playing actually against someone who subscribed to my channel. Um, I have played against him before. Um, and I'm sure I'll play against him again. And I've actually got a, a replay saved of the last game uh, that I played against him. Which I will be uploading later once I put some commentary to it. So we'll see how this goes. Now I'm Mordor and... I'm really trying to think whether I should just go all out Mordor, um, Mordor spam. You're going to have to spam something with Mordor. Uh, go all out Orc spam or to go for um, a bit less of a cheese and just go for Nazgul. Which I'm probably going to do, uh, go for the Nazgul. Um, now that's not because the Mordor spam is weak. In fact, it's the complete opposite. It's because I personally believe that the, uh, the Orc spam is overpowered. Um, especially when you combine it with trolls, which I, which I might show a little later. I have got quite a few games saved of um, the orc spam combined with trolls and how easy it is to win as Mordor with that. So we'll just go ahead and I probably won't even make trolls to be honest. Um, I'll just go for what I I um, consider to be the better option as Mordor, which is for early Nazgul. It's certainly more fun in my opinion. Um, but now I've realised that really that is not the best strategy. The best strategy is spam orcs, then rush for trolls. And he's saying for fuck's sake for some reason. Sikiv, if that's how you pronounce his name. I'm sorry if you're watching and I pronounced it completely wrong. So yeah, I'm going to go for a little bit of a, um, a more fun tactic. Let me just see what's going on. Um, and that is to, as I've said, rush for those Nazgul. Here's my little scout. And I really like this, this little guy. Look at his vision range. It's quite huge. So really you can see what your enemy is doing. And, it, and I realized that it didn't make. So my main concern is actually battle wagons in this matchup. Battle wagons can do quite a bit of damage um, against the orc spam. It's really one of the only things that stands up um, to such a high degree versus the Orc Spam. Let me just... Uh, actually, that's probably a little bit early. I'm just going to grab a pantry. Probably not going to make that much of a difference, but uh, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it too early. Um, and basically, the reason for that is it's just not good macro. Uh, to get your pantries when you don't actually need them. However, I do want to keep up the orc spam. So I, you do have to get pantries. And usually a lot of people will be thinking, um, you know, why don't you go for inside eco buildings before you go for that? Well, I just want to rush the Nazgul. Just want to get one out. And here I've got enough. And now I'll get a resource building. And I'll get my second Nazgul out pretty soon as well. And actually... I might just be really, really uh, cheeky and try and get two out because it looks like he hasn't taken his troll yet. And the money from that might give me enough to buy two. It's like playing vanilla, all these Nazgul out so early. Here he comes, but I mean, I overwhelm him in, in numbers at least. Not necessarily in power, but um, really numbers is all you need when you're trying to steal a troll because, and he's actually following these guys. So I'll pull these over. In comes the Nazgul. It seems like he's gone for a lot of pikes, which isn't great against my Nazgul start. And look at this. This is bad macro on his part to be following my orcs. Um, see, Kev, if you're watching, you shouldn't have done that. That was that was actually just bait from me. I was hoping you'd do that so I could steal the troll a little bit easier. He's got cutting arrows, which uh, cutting axes, which are excellent. But I will be able to trample him and stop that quite a lot. And he's going over for my Nazgul, so I'll be able to take all of that money. And that's enough for my second Nazgul. So those guys can continue to do that. And hmm, he's protecting his hero quite nicely with those pikes. So that's good to see. He's not protecting those axe throwers though. You see, I'm not actually losing that many units, even though I am playing Mordor. And really, I can't be losing units because 
I've only got one barracks up. So unlike if you if you go for more than one barracks, really it doesn't matter if you lose those three units. But actually, it's a little bit more important for me to keep them alive than it would be um, in an all-out gunko um, orc spam strategy. That being said, I will probably go for a, a second barracks now. Don't want to lose you guys just yet. You can harass, you can attack, but at least, you're, at least you're doing some nice harassment to compensate. So I'll go ahead and grab this here. And yes, I would like to say also that um, this is um, an opportunity for you guys to tell me, how is the sound? Because I have had a few complaints about the sound. Actually, you guys can go over there and start trying to kill those guys. Yes, I had a few, a few complaints about the sound of my keyboard and my mouse. I've since uh, changed my setup. Gone for another pantry there. Keep up the orc spam. I've since changed up my uh, my setup, and just yeah, how how does it sound? Does it sound any better? Is the clicking reduced? Is the sound from the keyboard reduced? Obviously, I'll have a listen back as well. And oh goodness me, it looks like he's, he will be going for battle wagons. So really, that to me just says. Get Kirith Ungol as soon as you can. And he's playing pretty well so far. I mean, he's got quite a few units out. So I do need to watch out. And um, it would help if I... And I just remembered now. It help to start spamming some orcs. Oh, and he's, and he's creeped that um, war glare there as well. So that's nice. Not nice for me, but nice from him. You guys can go up there and uh, creep for a little bit. So will I get that? Probably will. And look at the the Nazgul are pretty good at harassing as well. So they function a little bit like um, how Dimitri would, would use his trolls. I kind of replaced that with Nazgul. And, and the, I mean, trolls are excellent hero killers, but um, Nazgul are as well. And they're, they're reasonably good harassers. I don't know what is a better hero killer, the Nazgul or the trolls. And we've got some pikes out to try and kill my Nazgul, but thanks to, thanks to dwarves being slow AF, I can actually just run rings around him a little bit and... Uh, Destroy some of these buildings in that way. That way being um, just annoying in general. So here, I've destroyed that. Now really I need some um, some pikes out. Otherwise I'm just going to get wrecked by the battle wagons. Which I'm, I'm pretty confident are going to come. Because I've seen that um, forge works. I mean that's that's why I would get a forge works in this situation. That was going to be going for... Um, battering rams however I'm actually thinking about it I'm not actually that worried about the battle wagons because ooh, I am worried if I'm charging into pikes like that though luckily he hasn't got any pikes there so my Nazgul should survive um, but yes the Nazgul are faster than battle wagons I do believe so I should be reasonably okay if, if he does get some battle wagons out um, I just get some some more pikes just to be sure and I've got a bit of a cash flow which is never good i just go ahead and buy some Ecos, because this game will probably go on a little longer than... Um, I mean, like, the thing about Eco, and the thing that I've thought about um, Eco as well, is, as you've seen, I, I quite often don't like going for um, the inside buildings. But that's not to say that inside buildings are bad, in my opinion. It's just that if the game is going to be finished extremely early on, I prefer to just invest more in my army, and, and if... If it comes to it, invest in more in my um, siege to just quickly finish him off. Because really, 400 per resource building is quite a, a lot of money. But obviously, if it starts to go into the mid to the late game, really you just absolutely need that economy. So, so that's the, the thing that I'm thinking now. Is that really, it's getting towards the mid uh, and the late game. And I want to make sure that my economy is reasonably safe. So yeah, it, it, it's a safe option to go for the, um, for the inside economy buildings. And hopefully it's, hopefully it's going to pay off for me here. Now, I could have gone for Siege and just started attacking his base as well. And I probably would win with that strategy too. Um, I think I'm going to win with this with this strategy. And this is a, a safer strategy, I would say. There's the Battle Wagon, which I was expecting. Uh, we can see how much damage it does against Orcs. Really, these Orcs are not going to survive now that that Battle Wagon is there. I'm going to have to bring these guys over. And these guys were going to creep. And actually, they can continue to creep. I'll just kind of save as many orcs as I can with my Nazgul for now. Um, and then, here they are. Bring these guys over. So as you can see, I've got quite a lot of money now. I'm not actually going to upgrade any of these inside buildings. Other than p potentially with some um, 
pantry upgrades. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna really upgrade any more of my eco because really I'm completely winning in this position now. And having said that, Corbag just died. But oh well. Um, yeah, I'm completely winning in this position. I really I can't see him coming back, and there's not really any need to uh, upgrade my inside eco buildings. Uh, other than with pantry. I mean with pantry. That's just basic macro. I just need more troops um, But really for me going for extra eco it, It's more about get, preparing yourself for later in the game as I just mentioned We'll go ahead and use Sheila there. See if we can trap him. There's the battle wagon So I'll bring my nice girl over there you guys can come up here to try and harass you guys can try and do something with your lives so there it is, and let's see, I'm pretty sure that they're faster, and indeed they are, and I think he's actually slowed by the, um, the, no, I haven't, I haven't summoned any spiders, he's, he's got a debuff, oh, so, der, derp, it's the debuff of the Nazgul, I thought it was, the, I thought it was a speed debuff, debuff, speed debuff from, uh, Shelob's offspring, um, because I think those spiders do reduce the speed of cavalry, just ignore me. It was Dread Visage, as I'm sure you realised before me. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty much GG now. He, he's got quite a big force still um, of dwarves. But really, if you think about the map, he has he has none of it, apart from like two farms. I've got the rest of the map completely. And really, how is he going to stop me from uh, continuing to spam out these orcs? Getting a few rams in his base and... and oh! Having said that, I don't want to lose any Nazgul. It's not that secure to start throwing away your heroes. Um, but yeah, really, what, what is what is the plan that he can use now to defeat me in this position? I can't think of one. See how much... Look, the, the damage of the Nazgul here will be enough to destroy that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get those two. The damage of the battle wagon itself is not that bad as we see. And if he targets my nice school with the tower there, he might have been able to kill it. He didn't, so that's good news for me. So yeah, um, what could he have done differently? Hmm. I, I think just, I think really because, I think um, Sikiev, if that is how you pronounce your name, um, I think he is quite a new player. So I think really it was just general um, micro and macro where his plan failed. Um, it's, not, it's not necessarily the, the ideas that he had in this game were quite good. And that is to go for battle wagons. Maybe they came in a little late. Um, so I used to rush battle wagons actually. Like that would, I would literally just build a forge and then buy a battle wagon against Mordor. I, I really wouldn't recommend that now, but I did used to do that. This is once again when, when I was even more aggressive than I am now in my playstyle. Um, and look at the damage that the ore barrows do. That's really why they're, they're so good against Mordor. At least one of the reasons why they're so good against Mordor. The trample itself is pretty darn good as well. Yeah, what, what could he have done? Um, it's just... Yeah, he, he had all the right ideas, in my opinion, of, of the matchup. But it's all... It was probably like the timings were a little off. His micro was a little off. Um, and that includes timings of getting the resource buildings out as well. So your, so your general economy play. And also, it is just difficult to uh, beat Mordor in general. No matter what you do. And really, that is it now. That is GG. I can't imagine him coming back from this situation, even more than I was saying I couldn't imagine him coming back before. Really, this is GG. So, well played. He's a new player. I'm sure you'll get better in time, as I was a noob. Probably, uh, or definitely, a bigger noob than you are right now. So, yes, GG. Well played. He's got this. He's got this empty spot. So he's probably thinking, and this is actually what I do as um, dwarves as well. Probably thinking, I'll save that for my um, upgrade building, whatever it's called. Can't remember what it's called now. Um, yeah, that was probably his thought process, and that is, I'd, I'd recommend doing that as well. So that's it. The power of Mordor.
Uh, I didn't use the mega mega OP strategy that I'd like to show you guys a little later. Um, but as you see, this strategy in itself is good. In he comes with Bjorn. A little tip there. If you want to cast um, Tainted Land or Elven Ward, as you saw, I couldn't do it a little earlier. Um, I was going to hit him with a uh, Morgul Blade, but there wasn't enough time. He already died. Yes, if you want to cast that in your enemy's base, you can't cast it around the Citadel until the Citadel is destroyed. Once the Citadel is destroyed, you can cast it. So um, that's why I focused the Citadel first. Also, it stops his powers coming out. So yeah, that's it. GG, he's got a few farms over here, but really it's, it's not that important that he's got those farms now um, because his base is destroyed. GG, all played. So yes, back in the day, after, after a little um, hiatus to play some Company of Heroes, and I played some more Company of Heroes today and I am actually really enjoying it. Um, and already I'm a little better than I was in that uh, awful display against Rue Devil. So I hope Rue Devil, if you're watching, I am ready for a rematch. I'm not, going, I'm not saying I'm going to win. In fact, I'll probably lose again. But I'm, I'd, I'd say, 2 to 3% better than I was before. And for some reason in Company of Heroes 2, like, a lot of the abilities are like 2 to 3% accuracy increase. I really fail to see how much of a difference that would make in a game. Anyway, thank you for watching. Another example of how powerful Mordor is. Um... Yes, dwarves need battle wagons against Mordor, potentially a little bit quicker than that. So, thank you for watching, I'll let you go, and goodbye from me. Oh, actually, having said that, I'll give you a little overview of the tactics, because it is a replay, so I've got this um, available to me. The units, yes, of course, Mordor almost always will have more units. There was a big spike drop there, I think that was the time that the battle wagons came out, actually. And you can actually probably work that out by by looking at the video and see around the 10 minute mark it was. Was that when the first battle wagon came out? I can't really remember, but that's what I assume because if you remember, it was kind of like uh, in the top right hand corner. I was harassing um, him on his farm and he came in with some battle wagons and destroyed it. Also killed Warbag at that time. Um, structures. Um, we both had quite low number of structures. I particularly had low number of inside structures, but I, I made up for that with the outside structures, it seems. And then after destroying his, I, I kind of built up and, and went along that. There's the resources. And really, this is something um, with Mordor in particular, is the amount of uh, resources they have. Really, they've got one of the strongest economies, in my opinion, just because the main bulk of their forces are completely free. And there's just the score, uh, rounding it all off. I just slowly... Um, built up my advantages until I could destroy his base. Units created. Let's have a look at the uh, resources spent on units in particular. Yeah, he's got nearly double. And bearing in mind that I went for the quite expensive Kurith Ungol units in this game as well. So really that shows how cheap Mordor's army is. Which I think it should be. I think that's quite law accurate and law friendly. Um, and that we should balance, balance the orcs in another way. I like that they're free actually. It's just can we balance it is the problem. So there you go, I'll just hover over them. You can pause the video if you'd like to see. Seven heroes built, one killed. That was Gorbag dying. And he only built his scout hero who got killed. So there you are. Thank you for watching. And, oh, 24 versus 5. That's a nice little stat. And that just shows the harassment as well. Okay, finally I'll finish this video. Thank you and goodbye.